بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى He says in his noble book وتمت كلمة ربك صدقا وعدلا لا مبدلا لكلماته وهو السميع العليم He states that the word of your Lord is complete complete it with truthfulness and justice. There is no altering as it relates to his speech or to his words or statements. And he is the one that is all hearing and all knowing. As Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman ibn Nasir as Saadi or Rahimahullah Ta'ala in his tafsir of the Quran, of the Quran he states, A Sidqin fil Akbar. Then when Allah says that his words or his speech was complete completed with truthfulness, he states, A Sidqin fil Akbar. Truthfulness as it relates to what is mentioned therein, what is reported therein. Wa Adilan fil Amr wa Nahi. And as it relates to just being just justice or being just, this is as it relates to the commands and the prohibitions, yani the rulings and uh, that are found within the text of the Quran. This particular understanding, as it relates to the speech of Allah, that is truthful as it relates to what. Uh, it informs us of and as it relates to the rulings this being halal this being har haram that it is from that which is most just then there is no doubt that for the one that implements it the way that Allah Ta'ala intends that it is a means to bring about the rectification of that individual and the rectification of the family structure and the society in general yeah, and it brings about a rectification as it relates to the servant's affairs, all of his affairs, regardless if they be, yeah, and affairs that are directly connected to the religion or affairs that are directly connected to worldly matters. And so, when looking at and understanding this, then we have principles that are derived from the from the from this text that indicates that point that indicates that if uh, that if the legislation is followed the way that Allah intends then it brings about a benefit either in a preponderant sense or in the absolute sense and from those principles that we have is a principle either ta'arudat al-maslaha wal mafsada qaddam arjahuhuma the the, the principle, its meaning, yani if you have a maslaha, that which is considered a benefit, and a mafsada, that which is, which is considered harm, or that which is considered to be destructive, if they are rivaling one another, in competition with one another, then you put forth that which is more uh, more weightier, for lack of better translations, you put you 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 put forward that which is more weightier. What is intended by this is that in some certain situations you can have a benefit, but if you implement that benefit, it automatic automatically attached to it will be some type of harm as well. So what is looked at is what seems to be more 
weightier or more preponderant? Is the benefit more preponderant or is the harm more preponderant? If the harm is more preponderant, then you abandon the harm. But by abandoning the harm, you automatically lose the good as well. Why? Because they're connected. It's almost as if they're intertwined. You can't have one without the other. And the opposite is for the opposite. If the good is more preponderant, yet this harm is, is connected to it, if the good is more preponderant, you implement the good, even though there'll be some harm in a, uh, in a marginal sense. And this is what is intended as it relates to this particular principle. This particular principle, in light of, of it, then we want to look at, in, in light of it, then we understand that that which was dubbed Arabi al Arabi or the Arab Spring, we know that in light of this particular principle, that this Arab Spring was nothing more than a disaster upon the Muslims. It was a calamity upon the Muslims. As nothing or there was no positive outcome as it relates to the Arab Spring. On the contrary, the mafsada or the harms far outweighed the good that was attempting or tried to, that people tried to achieve. And this is something that the scholars, when this Arab Spring uh, first occurred, that the scholars attempted to warn the Muslims about. This is why you have the scholars like Sheikh Saleh al Fawzan, uh, notably speaking, and others say, uh, yani advising the Muslims not to participate in this, in this Arab Spring. Now, years later, people now realize the harms of moving based off emotion instead of looking at things based off these principles that are based off the text of the Quran and the Sunnah and the principles that are derived the, from, from uh, this text. When we look at each Egypt, for instance, the overthrowing of Husni Mubarak, the people were fed up with his leadership. And we're not saying that this man was perfect. This is not a defense of Husni Mubarak. He wasn't the best of, of leaders, but he was removed. And then by way of elections, Mohammed Morsi was put into power. And then people started to become disgruntled with him to eventually the military removed him. And now you have who you have in power today and the situation on the ground in Egypt from me just talking to students of knowledge that have been there for just about 20 years the situation and the circumstance in Egypt today is much worse than it was when Husni Mubarak was in a power. And now what do we have happening? The Egyptian people are starting to hit the streets and protest yet again. When we look at the situation in Yemen, where, where Ali Abdullah Saleh, Ali Abdullah Saleh held the country together. Now look at the situation as a result of the Arab Spring. Varying factions rose up from the Houthi. Uh, well, the Houthi were already, Yani, uh, attempting to cause corruption, but the forces who were united under Ali Abdullah Saleh had them restricted to the Saada area. But after this Arab Spring took place in Sana and other places, then it opened up the do the door for them. They seized an opportunity, but it wasn't just them. It was a lot of uh, fighting throughout the country. As we now see that the South has tried to or, or has broken away from the rest of the country. You had the Khawarij and Shabua and thus forth and so on. All of this came as a result, or all of this is from the fruits of this Arab Spring. When we look into the situation in Syria, Yani. There's been more than is reported 
that there is more than 400,000 deaths yani within Syria since this out of spring and this is reported by the World Bank 5 million Syrians displaced or 5 million Syrian refugees meaning they fled to other countries seeking lodging 5 million or excuse me 6 million displaced internally 6 million Syrians within Syria are now displaced and 540,000 live, in, uh, uh, live in, besieged, in besieged areas. And this is as of June of 2017, this, this number, these numbers that I'm quoting to you now. In 2018 alone, there were 20,000 people killed in, in Syria. 6,500 of them were civilians. Um, uh, yani, and this is reported by the Syrian Obs Observatory on Human Rights. So the point that I, that's being made here is that the Arab Spring was a calamity upon the Muslims. And the Mafsada far outweighed the Maslaha. Because now the countries such as Syria and Libya and Yemen and thus forth and so on can now be considered are now considered to be failed states. There's chaos, there's commotion taking place in, in those in those areas. There's the safety and security is just about gone. People's properties have been destroyed. The blood has been ha, has been spilled and thus forth and so on. And this is because the Muslims didn't remedy a problem that was occurring in those countries in accordance with that which Allah to Baraka wa Ta'ala legislated. Excuse me. The, uh, Allah states, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَاتُهُ وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَاتُهُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا The word of your Lord has been completed with truthfulness and justice. The ahkam that is found within the Sharia is just. And it brings about a benefit to the overall society. So when problems are, yani, arise and we look for remedies to these problems outside of the text of the Quran and the Sunnah, that we bring upon ourselves unnecessary hardships like w what we saw in this out of spring that at the time it was taking place, the West was praising it and the foolish from amongst the Muslims, as I remember when I was in Compton in 2011, when the Syrian conflict, I believe it was late 2010, 2011, when the Syrian conflict uh, uh, first initiated, you had some Muslims come to the masjid that following Friday giving away chocolates in celebration of what was taking place. Now, fast forward years later, the emotionalism of the, uh, of the Muslims has been a direct result in our downfall to, uh, uh, today. Looking to remedy problems outside of the text of the Quran and the Sunnah has been a major problem yani, for the Muslims in this day and time. Now, as it relates to the mawqif, or the position of the Muslim, as it relates to rulers that are not considered to be righteous, meaning rulers that are considered to be uh, unjust, then the text of the Quran and the Sunnah gives us some direction on how we should deal with that. We have an authentic narration that is found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, and it is upon the authority of Auf ibn Malik, well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated, خيار أئمتكم والذين تهبونهم ويهبونكم ويصلون عليكم وتصلون عليهم He stated that the best of your leaders are those whom you love and they love you. They pray for you and you pray for them. وشرار أئمتكم والذين تبغضونهم ويبغضونكم 
And the worst of your leaders are those whom you hate and they hate you. You curse them and they curse you. So it was said to the Prophet Sallallahu Should we not revolt against them with the sword? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stated, La ma aqamu fikum as-salah. No, you should not revolt against them with the sword as long as they establish the salah amongst you. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ فِي أُوِلَاتِكُمْ شَيْئًا تَقْرَهُونَهُ فَقْرَهُ عَمَلَهُ And if you see something within your leaders, and as a result you start to hate your leader, then hate his action instead. وَلَا تَنْزِعُوا يَدًا مِنْ طَاعَةً But do not remove your hands from obedience. Do not remove your hands from obedience. So the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about the leaders and how they would be, these types of leaders would be from those that are the, 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 the most evil from amongst the Muslims. Yet and still, when he was questioned about revolting against them, he, he, he responded in a negative that they, it should not be done. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu understood that it could lead to the bloodshed amongst the Muslims. That which we're seeing currently today. In another narration that's collected by Imam Muslim upon the authority of Hudayfa, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, يَكُونُ بَعَدِ أَئِمَّةٌ لَا يَحْتَدُونَ بِهُدَايَا وَلَا يَسْتَنُّونَ بِسُنَّتِي وَسَيَقُومُ فِيهِمْ رِجَالٌ كُلُوبُهُمْ كُلُوبُ الشَّيَاطِينَ فِي جُثْمَانِ إِنْتِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stated, uh, There will be after me leaders that would not be guided by my guidance, nor would they adopt my sunnah. And from amongst them, these types of leaders, there will be men. Amongst these leaders, there will be men. Their hearts are the hearts of devils within the bodies of man. This is how the Prophet Wasallam is describing how some of these leaders would be. So Hudayfa, he, he then states, كَيْفَ أَصْنَعُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ in adrak to thalik, what should I do, O Messenger of Allah, if I was to reach that? Yani, if I were to live and, and be amongst leadership of this nature, the Prophet sallallahu stated, "Tasma'u wa tuti' lil Amir, hear and obey the Amir." Wa in darba dhahraka wa akhda malak, fasma' wa atiy. He then stated. Even if they were to smite your back and seize your wealth, Yani still hear and obey. Hear and obey. And again, it's because the harms and revolting far outweigh the good that, that a person is trying to achieve. There's going to be some pushback like what we're seeing today. We have another narration that is likewise found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim and it is upon the authority of Ubada ibn Samit. We stated, Da'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fabaya'anahu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he summoned us and thus we gave the pledge to him, yani to be يعني allied with him. فكان فيما أخذ علينا أن بايعنا على السمع والطاعة. He stated, Ubad ibn Samad, he continued, and from that which he imposed upon us, that it, it, it was that uh, we gave the pledge upon hearing and obeying. From that which was imposed upon us is that we 
يعني he gave the pledge to hear and obey. يعني the Muslim ruler. في من شطنا ومقرحنا. In the in our times of pleasure and displeasure. وعسرنا ويسرنا. And in our times of difficulty and ease. وأثرة علينا. And in times when preface was given to other than us. When in times when preface was given to other than us. وَأَنْ لَا نُنَازِعَ الْأَمْرِ أَحْلَهُ And that we did not contest the authority of people who are fit for it. إِلَّا أَنْ تَرَوْ كُفْرًا بَوَاحًا إِنَّكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِيهِ بُرْحَانُونَ And then the Prophet Wasallam stated, Unless you see clear and undisputed Clear, undis uh, undisputed, manifest disbelief. That in which Allah wa Taala has, as it relates to this disbelief, has given you a proof for, has made manifest for you, has made it clear. Yani, has given you a proof as it relates to the kufr of that particular leader. Outside of that, if his hukum is Muslim. Then revolting, being patient with him and is mandatory and revolting against the Muslim ruler is prohibited. It is prohibited. This is for the betterment of the entire Muslim community. That a person refrains from falling into these types of things that, that took place in the Arab's that took place in the Arab Spring due to the corrupt and harmful outcome that it leads to, like we see occurring in this day and time. And that the Muslim ruler should not be revolted against unless there is clear and undisputed disbelief. And Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin. He gave a, some, he has some excellent kalam when he talked about this clear and undisputed disbelief. He said that there shouldn't be a matter, in, uh, an action, a statement or action where the scholars differ on if it's disbelief or not. One group of scholars saying it's disbelief, another scholar, group of scholars saying it's not disbelief. For instance, the abandonment of the salah. Some of the scholars say a person has not disbelieved by abandoning the salah, when others state that it is disbelief and a person has disbelief. So it shouldn't be a matter of this nature. Likewise, it should be understood that the conditions for takfir are in place and all obstacles that will prevent that, that ruling from, from being sound have been removed. And then in the ulama state some other conditions as well, the ability to remove the, the this type of ruler uh, likewise uh, the go the revolting shouldn't lead to another person of his exact uh, 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 that that is exactly like him taking his place or someone that's even worse than that they state that th this shouldn't happen and likewise that the people in that locality that they should be able to depend and rely upon themselves. They don't need help from outside of the region in, uh, in order to remove this this type of person. That it should be a removal that is easy to that is easily done without this causing of bloodshed throughout the land. The point, because the text of the Quran and the Sunnah was not followed in this regard, people fell into what they fell into of the Arab, as it relates to the Arab Spring. And as we see years later, based off what's going on in Syria, what's going on in Libya, what's going on in Yemen, what's going on in Egypt, and thus forth and so on, all of this proves that the Arab Spring was one big disaster and calamity upon the Muslims. I pray that Allah Taala bless us to learn from our mistakes. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala knows best now.